every river is different, and each has its own group of characters. None is more elusive than the otter. By the 1970s, the otter was all but extinct from our rivers due to pollution. But since DDT pesticides used in farming were banned, the otter has made a remarkable comeback. It's a typical cold February morning, and I've had a tip-off that an otter is regularly seen on this West Country river. A quick recce reveals otter sprint and fish remains in a culvert. A sure sign that there has been an otter here recently. It wasn't long before I had my first sighting. It's a female, smaller and less muscular than a dog otter. She will bob up like a cork in the fast flowing water just down from the weir. I soon realised there was a pattern to her movements. She would hunt in the rapids, then make her way upstream in the calmer water on the far bank, and then repeat the process. Occasionally, she would take larger prey onto the bank to consume her quarry. There was no telling where she would appear, and more often than not, small eels were her food of choice. A few chomps of an otter's jaws, and it was gone. While observing, I noticed she had two telltale distinguishing features, a moustache and a distinctive kink in her tail. And I wondered what could have happened to her. Perhaps it was damage sustained in a fight at some time in her life. Despite her dodgy tail, it didn't seem to hinder her progress. She began to move upstream towards the weir, hunting as she went. The weir stretches the full width of the river. The water below is both wild and fierce. Despite weirs being dangerous places, she tackles the weir with ease. She uses her powerful back legs to repeatedly propel herself forwards and out of the water. An otter's body is perfectly adaptive for these conditions. Her bullet-shaped body easily cuts through the turbulent water. Only occasionally would she pause, and that was to eat.
Eventually, she catches a larger fish, probably a perch. and heads through the rough water and into the culvert where I had spotted the sprint and fish remains earlier. After a short while she reappears. She shoots over the culvert and into the calmer water upstream. Then, just like a ghost, she was gone. Waiting for otters is a time-consuming business, but there is always something interesting to observe. So I've made my acquaintance with some of the other creatures that live on the river. The moorhens look particularly nervous, and so they should be. Otters don't only eat fish, they can be quite partial to the odd moorhen now and again. The drake mallards only have one thing on their minds, fighting over a lady. After a while, they seem to forget what they were fighting about in the first place. As unseen to them, the female had wandered off and left them to it. She was clearly not impressed by their yobbish behaviour. Goldfinches were finding rich pickings on the fertile bank. Lurking in the reed bed, a little egret uses their usual hunting tactic of shaking its legs to disturb what lies beneath. Suddenly, its focus changes. Something else had caught its attention. Finally, my patience paid off. I saw the otter hunting in the deeper water. Every now and then, she would disappear into the scrub. I presume to eat her prey. I then realised this was a different otter and not the one I had filmed before. No moustache. And this otter's tail was straight with no kink. She repeated her excursion into the undergrowth several times.
I could see movement through the brush, but I couldn't quite make out what I was seeing through my viewfinder. When she reappeared, I couldn't believe my luck. Two cubs plopped into the water behind her. They were at most only a few months old. Otters give birth at any time of year, unlike many other mammals who tend to give birth in the spring. At times the cubs seemed clumsy, unlike their mother who was sharp, alert and was constantly scanning for danger. Otter cubs have to learn to be otters, they are not born with the athletic skills their mother has, it will take time for them to learn. She certainly had to keep tabs on them, just like a couple of toddlers in a shop, they had the tendency to wander. A little scowl and a touch of noses reassures them. Finally, she takes them to a halt. A halt is an otter den, a place of safety for her and her cubs to rest. and after a little housekeeping, she disappears with them. After a couple of hours they resurface and continue on their journey downstream. As a wildlife cameraman, it doesn't get much better than experiences like this. I tracked them for as far as I could, until eventually they disappear into the distance. As long as we can keep our waterways clean, it looks like the otter is back. <laughs>